everybody! I am Nico D. Today I'm back with another new single board computer. It's the Oldroid N2. So this has got the Amlogic S922X SOC. So this has got 4 cores, Cortex-A73 clocked at 1.8 GHz and 2 cores, Cortex-A53 clocked at 1.9 GHz. But they can all be overclocked to 2 GHz. So this has got a very powerful CPU compared to any other single board computer. This is the fastest of all, even compared to the octa-core socks, it outmatches every one of them. This also has got an awesome heatsink. This will never overheat, that is really great. When it's overclocked, the maximum temperature is 65 degrees, but when it's not overclocked, it's only 60 degrees. So this just can't never overheat whatever you do with it. And that is something I really love about this board. That was also on the Oldroid C2. You can use this board constantly maxed out without using a fan. So with this one that's also like that. For me this is really awesome. I use it for Blender and I use it to render my videos. So this can all be done silently and also without using much power. So compared to an x86 PC this uses about 10 times less power while it is half as fast. So that is awesome. There are three Linux operating systems for it now. There is Ubuntu Mate, there is Debian Stretch from Maverick and there is also an Armbian for it made by Bobs150. Bobs makes a lot of images for TV boxes and also for the S922X. So he also has made one for the Oldroid N2. With Ubuntu Mate there are a few problems. Auto mount doesn't work right, it isn't very stable. The stretch from Maverick is for this moment a bit better than Ubuntu Mate, but I prefer Armbian from Bulbs. I haven't found any issues with that Armbian. I've got this board for about a month now, but there were too many problems to make a video about it. I wasn't sure if those problems could be fixed or not, but now these problems have been fixed, so now I can make the video. Uh, one problem was the gigabit ethernet didn't work, so for this there is a fix now. They should be fixed in the next update of Ubuntu Mati and the next update of uh, Maverick's Stretch. So I will not show the fix for this. A second problem was that swap files didn't work and also ZRAM didn't work. When it got over its available memory of 3.6 gigabytes, then it crashed the application. So this is fixed now too. Thanks to Brad from the Oldroid forum, he found the fix for this. I'm very thankful for that because I really needed that for Blender. And the third problem is the USB 3 port. There is interference on the USB 3 ports when you are using a USB 3 device on it and 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi modules. So if you use a keyboard, wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse or wireless internet on the same ports here, and also a USB 3 device, then there will be interference. But for that, you can use the OTG port over here. I use a USB hub and I put all my 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi modules in there. Then there is no problem, then everything is stable with the USB ports. So that is fixed too. So now I can show you everything. So here we go! First the specifications. I will start at the bottom right and go clockwise. So first we see the Gigabit Ethernet port. Next to that is the HDMI port. This is HDMI 2.0 up to 4K. Then we've got 4 ports of USB 3. But all these 4 ports are connected over one USB controller. So this means that the 4 ports together only perform at the speed of one USB port. Next to that are 2 indicator LEDs and then the barrel jack. Then we see the UART connector. Then the SD card connector. Next to that is the infrared receiver. Then we've got the eMMC connector. So this can have eMMC modules from 8GB up to 128GB. Then there is the boot switch. So you can boot in pitted boot. This means you can select which boot device you want to boot. Or you can leave it on MMC. That means it's gonna boot from the eMMC or from the SD card. Next to that is the OTG micro USB port, so this is USB 2.0, so it's great it has this, because it only has got one USB 3 controller, so that one USB 2 controller on top is very good. 
Next to that is a 3.5 mm audio jack. Above that is a RTC connector for real time clock. And as last there is the 40 pin GPIO header. There are four RAM modules, two on the front and two on the back. And also the SOC is on the back. I already told you this comes with four A73 cores and two A53 cores. And this comes with the Mali G52 MP6. So this is a very powerful GPU with six cores. And for the RAM there is a choice of 2 GB or 4 GB RAM. And this is DDR4 at 1320 MHz. This board doesn't have Wi-Fi on board. This is a bit a shame. Most boards now come with 5 GHz Wi-Fi and this doesn't have that. To download Ubuntu Mati I type Odroid Wiki. Then to Odroid N2. And there to Software, Ubuntu. This should be updated very soon. So now it isn't perfect yet, but it will be better. And here is the downloads. For Mavericks, Debian Stretch, we need to go to the Odroid forum. There go to Odroid N2, then Other OS. And there is Stretch for the Odroid N2. And here we can download it. So this image is made by Maverick. My loyal followers will know who Maverick is. He ports a lot of games to Odroids. But for now most of his games don't work because there are no X11 drivers. So I hope these will come soon. And as last for Bulbs Armbian we go to the Armbian forum. There to TV boxes. And there Armbian for Amlogic S9XXX. Here on the first page are the download links. And the last version is the newest. So here the Odroid N2, Dev, and here is Armbian Bionic with the desktop. Here I am in Armbian. For me this is the best operating system, everything works for me. Gain Life didn't work in Stretch, here it does work so that is great for me. I've created ZRAM, 1.8 GB ZRAM and also a swap file of 8 GB. Do not use a swap file when you are using an SD card, but I use a 128 GB eMMC module and these are very fast. Up to 140 MB a second read and write. To watch YouTube videos I use Firefox. This works very well. This board doesn't have VPU drivers yet. But the CPU is so powerful that it can play videos up to 1440p. 4K again. just doesn't work. Everything. And uh, it's around 10.30 I think. It's uh, still in the morning. The sun is out. It's looking very nice. I didn't put my solar panel on there because I've charged one of my big batteries over there so uh, that's not necessary. I don't know where I go. He's a remedy. But he is a king when it's all his own. The colors may not look right, but this is because of my capture device. Also, if the frame rate doesn't look right, it's also because of my capture device. But it looks perfect in real life. Home scooter! <laughs> As you could see up to 1440 was perfect, but in 4K the image doesn't move anymore. I am using a display resolution of 1080p. If you use a higher display resolution, then it could be that 1440p doesn't work anymore. With normal video files it's the same. 1080p plays perfect, but 4K doesn't play well.
I've been using the N2 the last weeks to render 4K images with Blender. This worked really great. This is a very CPU demanding program and to be able to run it like this on an SBC is really awesome. Here's a very demanding scene that I've made for Armbian and it works very well to browse through it. Blender really makes good use of these cores. So if I render this in 4K with all the settings to max, then we see that it quickly uses all the RAM and it starts to fill up the ZRAM and the swap file. So for this it was really necessary that swap and ZRAM works. With the Odroid N2 this render takes about 10 hours, with my PC it would take about 5 hours, but my PC consumes a lot more power and it also makes a lot more noise. So the Odroid N2 I just let it run at night, and when I wake up, it has done a marvelous job. To overclock the N2, I use Genie with sudo writes. And then I open the file boot.ini and the boot partition. And there we can change these. For me these settings worked well, but the highest setting of 2 GHz didn't work. That wasn't stable anymore. Ok, we save it and then we reboot. Here the result of the BMW Blender benchmark in Armbian Bionic. So the default time was 50 minutes and 55 seconds and the overclocked time was 47 minutes and 58 seconds. So it is 3 minutes difference, this is 6% faster. So if we compare that with other SBCs you see that there is no match for the Odroid N2. It is almost 20 minutes faster than the NanoPi M4. I do need to do all these tests again on all the other SBCs. I redid it on the NanoPi M4, but the others I have to do again. Something has changed which makes it a little faster, but the difference isn't that big. So all the others except the N2 and the M4 should be a few minutes faster. And here the 7 zip results. So this is more only a CPU demanding task. And here it still outperforms everything else, even the octa-core Nano PC T3 Plus. So this is really very impressive. So my conclusion about the Odroid N2, it is really an awesome beast, the CPU power of it is really impressive, I haven't seen anything like it and I hope I will see more like this in the future. This is very close to a perfect desktop computer, we really need open source GPU drivers for it to be able to play games on it and to be able to watch 4K videos. For now it is already very good, you can watch 1080p videos, it's very good for productivity. I use it to offload a lot of tasks of my PC so my PC can be free. And for that task it's really awesome. It ain't the best SBC for a data server, it only has got one lane of USB 3 and that is really a pity. You cannot connect multiple hard drives to it and expect very good results. Also the USB 3 stability isn't perfect. Maybe if you connect multiple USB 3 hard drives to it then you could get into problems with it. I use as less devices as possible on the USB 3 ports and that way it is stable. I still hope there will be a fix for this problem. I will keep looking for it. I must thank all the people from the Odroid forum who have helped me finding solutions for the problems. I truly love this board, it's really a pity it doesn't have Wi-Fi and also only one lane of USB 3, but for me it is perfect, I have a lot of CPU demanding tasks, so for me this is great. It isn't for everybody, for gaming in Linux it will take some time before we can do that. You can do that already in Android, but you know I'm not an Android person, watch the videos of ETA Prime for that. I will make another video about Debian Stretch from Maverick on how to install the desktop and how to do everything. I will wait until a new version will come out of it. So that was it, thank you all for watching, I hope you liked my video, see you later, bye!